Um, I went to a senior market at a private high school. I was on varsity cheer. I have a good family life, no problems. And just so you know, I was not addicted to drugs. I didn't wake up craving them. I didn't beam for a shot of heroin or any of that. I was just a normal girl who graduated high school and I wanted to have fun and party with my friends. So we went to EDC The Rave, June 09, and, and um, I took ecstasy. I ended up overdosing, and from the moment I walked into The Rave, two months later, I woke up in a hospital bed. I was in a coma for two months, I had complete organ and respiratory failure. I had four strokes. And when I woke up, I couldn't walk and I couldn't talk. And I had no idea why I was there. I was still coherent enough to realize that something happened, but I couldn't express myself. So I felt like I was trapped in this lifeless body and no one could understand me or knew what I was thinking or feeling. I was in a hospital in LA. So after about two and a half months of being there, I was transported to Mission Hospital in Mission Mio, and I went into inpatient physical rehab, trying to relearn to walk and talk. I was in a wheelchair for five months, and I was there for about two, and they couldn't help me anymore. So I was transported to CNS in Bakersfield for three months. It was a live-in rehab center where it was full of paraplegic people and just different types of disabilities, and it was a huge wake-up call for me because I'm super sheltered here, I admit it. And I have everything given to me, and my parents are very supportive. And so when I went to this place, it was a big eye-opener about what's really out there and everything. So I went to extensive physical rehab every single day, trying to relearn to walk and talk, I finally got into a walker for two months, and then it came. I was still wobbly and couldn't really walk, but they thought I was too good for the rehab center, so they sent me home. When I came home, I went to, back to Mission Hospital for another three months for outpatient rehab. I was finally able to walk by myself, but I was super unsteady, and I'd run into walls, and it wasn't fun. All of my friends got to go away to college, and I was stuck in hospitals and fits and cool rehabs for about a year and a half. Um, this not only really affected me, but it affected my family really bad. My younger brother had the hardest time of this, and he didn't know if I was gonna live or die. And we were really close, so he was devastated. Right when I got home, his best friend, Mark Malconian, died of an overdose, and he completely checked out of school, everything. So he had to go to continuation school, where he got his grades up, focused on school, and now he's back at Daniel's High School and he's doing better. But seeing him go through that was probably harder for me than everything I went through. I just want to leave this off by saying high school is super tough. It's very hard, you're trying to fit in, trying to find your place. But when you get to college, 
Just know that it's completely different. No one cares who you were in high school. No one cares if you're a band, if you're in cheer, if you play football. You can reinvent yourself. So make a choice now who you want to be and just focus on that and don't let people or influence you to do drugs or drink or any of that. And just focus on yourself. And that's all I have to say. Hey, my name is Paul. Um, real quick, how many of you guys know, know people that are using drugs and alcohol? Okay, quite a bit. How many of you people know people who are addicted or have a serious problem? Okay, so a lot. How many of you guys use drugs and alcohol? A couple honest? Okay. Cool, so I'm gonna tell you a little bit about my story. Um, I asked because I wanna know who I'm speaking to. You guys obviously know a little bit about this. So I'm gonna tell you a little bit about my story. Hey, JD. Um, then I'm going to, uh, then I'm going to uh, at, let you guys ask us some questions. So with that, um, yeah, I grew up in a really nice home. My, my parents were great. Um, it was basically your normal environment. And I was the guy in high school, I'd go to a party, and I felt like I didn't fit in, I didn't really like the music that was playing, I couldn't talk to the girls, and I didn't feel comfortable in my skin. And as soon as you put a drink or a drug in my body, I liked the music, I fit in, I could talk to the girls, and I was confident, right? So drugs and alcohol did for me what I couldn't do for myself. Um, so, uh, so it worked, and this isn't like dare. You know, uh, I grew up on D.A.R.E., I don't know if you guys have heard of that or not, but they basically said drugs aren't fun, you do them, and then you're going to die. That was the um, message that I got, right? So growing up, the first thing I tried, I tried alcohol, I didn't die, I did have a good time, and, uh, and so I said, well, they're obviously lying, and I'm going to keep doing this, so I'm going to do it a lot more. So, moving on, I, I moved on to weed, I tried coke, I tried acid, I tried mushrooms, I tried everything. Um, and again, I finally felt like I fit in, I felt like I had arrived, you know. So, I kept doing it because it was working, but we talk about fun, and then fun with problems, and then just problems. That is my story in a nutshell. At first it was fun, but I was late to school. Little stuff, right? So I'd be late to school. I wouldn't show up to school, they call my parents, all of a sudden I'm starting to have some problems, okay? Fast forward, 17 years old, you guys saw in the film, I ran away from home, mom and dad were getting in the way of my drinking and using. So, I ran away, I lived at a dealer's house, my mom came up to the car door, I was shooting up. The most important thing I had at that moment was my fix, my Oxycontin, my heroin, right? Now I wasn't raised this way, I wasn't raised to be a thief, a liar, a cheat, but I became that, okay? Um, so anyways, my mom rolled off, and she turned out to be okay, but at that time, I did not care. And that is the biggest thing that I want to express. The selfishness and self-centeredness that we get from this is incredible. So I drove off, I later got arrested, four felonies, um, and it all started with one drink. Now, everybody in here, if you have one drink, are you gonna go down that path? Probably not, okay? But I didn't think that was gonna be me. So I wanna tell you guys two things today. One, if you have to get sober young, your life is not over. I'm 22 years old, I have two years of sobriety, and I have a blast. I go to Mexico, I go to shows, I play music, I do all this stuff, and I do it sober today. The other thing is the place that you can go, I go to a place called Alcoholics Anonymous, um, and it's absolutely saved my life. So if you guys ever think you need help, Call one of us, um, and uh, and we're happy to help. It's totally anonymous. So with that, that's all I have. I want to open it up for questions. <laughs>